We're going to continue to make uh, CSS styles for the rest of our page and then we'll get into web fonts uh, and show you how to do that. So you may or you may not have remembered but in the original site a couple of things here had transparency. This box right here is transparent and so is this one. Also this one, whoa, sorry I made you dizzy, has round corners on three sides and a pointy corner on that side so we'll do that next on our website. So um, this guy right here, whoops, this guy right here is our main. That's where the color black comes from. So I'm going to go into the designer and I can see um, in my set here, if I say show set, just while that's selected, well, the color is not in there. Oh, there it is. There's the color. Um, I'm going to have to actually move this over a bit and up a bit for you to see this happen. So bear with me. Okay. So the color right now is in hexadecimal form. Uh, I'll even show you in the code over here what this looks like. If I say, oh no, I can't do that. There's the code right there for the color of the background. All right. Uh, hexadecimal, a six digit number, really doesn't know transparency. So in order to change that so it does know transparency, you have to know one thing or do one thing. So let's go back to live view here. Click on clickiness. Not clicking so well. Here we go, main. There we go. I'm going to slide this back up here. I'm going to pick the color picker. And there's a transparency slider over here in the CC version. Now the problem is I can slide that all I want to and nothing's going to happen over here. The trick is this. You have to pick a color um, mode that is accepts alpha. So the A at the end represents alpha or transparency. This one will do it and RGBA will also do it. Didn't change the color, it just allows me to use transparency now. So when I slide down the slider, I'm going to put that at about 70. The code for this will end up being RGBA 0, 0, 0, 0, and 70, or 0 0.70. All right, so let's see how that works. Now you can kind of see through here. And if I looked back at the code for that, you'd see the same thing. Not background color. Where'd it go? Oh, here it is. Here it is. The main body color now is in RGB. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing. Um, for the navigation, I'm just going to take this color and copy it since I'm already over here. Find nav and then paste that in for my color over here. And if I go back to live and scoot up, I can see some transparency through there. Cool or what? All right, for this next one, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Command minus will get me to zoom out so we can see the corners of this. While I'm working on this, again, live, I mean, um, main, I'm in live view. I am going to come turn this off so I can see all of these things. And if I move down to border, I'll have these rounded uh, options. So I can put borders all the way around it on one side or another of the thing. And these are nice little style things, but we're going to make rounded borders here. I'm going to click the link in the middle to change them all at the same time. And I'll just go out to one of them and scrub and we can see this corner is getting round. Okay, um, I'm going to set them at about 40 just because. Then I'm going to click the link off because I don't want this corner to be round. So I'm going to turn that one back to zero and just like magic, round, well, it's way down there, round corners everywhere except the upper left. All right, what's next? Uh, we have a drop shadow on this headline. And so I'm going to add that. This one we made in Photoshop. This one we're going to make with CSS. So we're going to just go right here. We'll zoom back in. Um, this, if you'll remember, is H1 uh, with a class of headline. So I'm going to go to that style and open that up a little bit so I can find my dot headline. That'll work. So for dot headline, I am going to go to text. And if I keep sliding down on text, I'll see text shadow. So for this, I can pick 
First I'll pick a color. Black seems to be a good color for the drop shadow, so I'm going to leave it in black. And then I can go hover over this, and I should be able to change it. I just want it to offset a little bit so that we can see that shadow. Not too much. Maybe two and two. I'm just going to type it. Scrubbing's not working very well. Um, and then I'm going to blur it a little bit. So I'm going to hover over this one and blur it so it's a little softer of a drop shadow. Okay. Now, the way we'll be able to see this, um, if I look at it, and I'm going to go back to heading, headline, I'm sorry, and then turn this show sets on. I can turn this on and off. As I roll over these things, I see this little no symbol and a trash can symbol. If I trash it, it turns off all of my drop shadow settings. Um, or I can trash one at a time. The other thing I can do is just disable it so I can see it turn on and turn off. And that way it gives me an idea of the kind of before and after of what it would look like. Okay? So remember you can test it just by looking at it like that or the other way. All right. So that brings us to fonts. This was supposed to be this um, Alex uh, brush font. So let me show you how I do that. First, I need to go to um, Google Fonts. We'll start with Google Fonts, and then we'll, I'll show you how to do the Edge fonts. But right now, in my Google Fonts, I'm going to just type in Alex, because I've already picked out a font. It's Alex Brush. And here it is right here. So I say add to collection. I'll go down here. It's my collection. I'll say use from my collection. And then it'll show me how long it will take, approximately 12 seconds on the average web page, I guess, to download the fonts. Remember, you don't want to use a lot of web fonts because if you do load a bunch of web fonts, they'll all have to load to the end user's computer. Um, and it may really slow down how fast your page opens. Okay, so now that I have this one uh, chosen here, I can slide down here and it tells me exactly what to do. I can choose the character sets that I want. I'm just going to pick Latin. Add this code to your website. Okay, and over here it even tells you where. You can even see an example. It wants it in the head section of your um, website. Or I can go like this and see an example of it. Um, which is right here. Okay, so it really kind of walks you through this. So I'm gonna add this, I'm just gonna copy and paste it. So copy it from here, I'm gonna run over here, go to code, go to the top, right after head. Remember where we put this, the Java script in for the email? I'm gonna paste it in right there. Going right back over here. The next thing I need to do is integrate the fonts into my CSS. So instead of calling one of the font stacks that they already have, I'm going to pick this font stack right here. All right, I don't need this part, but it, I can't <laughs> unselect it, so I'm going to copy it and come back over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a class for this font to be turned into Alex Script. So I'm just going to go to Styles. I'm going to make a new one, and it's going to be called Doc Fancy because that is a fancy script. And in my fancy script, I'm gonna to go to text, and where it says font family, I'm gonna double click, and I'm gonna paste in what I just copied. The only thing I don't wanna paste in is this part that says font family colon. So I'm just getting that right out of there and hit return. Okay, so nothing's happened. I have a class called fancy. I have this type. And I have the, the loader uh, up in the head section already. So I'm going to turn this on design view so I can get a hold of this type. I just want to select this type. Then from the properties menu, I'll come down and there'll be at this class pull down. And I should be able to see one that says fancy. And there it is. All right. Still nothing changed very much because I need to go back to live view to make that really work. And there it is. It's a little small. So... Um, let's go ahead and do something else with that fancy font. We'll say size. We'll go with EMs again. And we'll scrub that up. 
Whoa, that is very giant. Let's go one, perhaps, oops, I've lost it. There we go. How about 1.2? That was 1.2. I think 1.4 maybe. Yes. That's a bit big. 1.3. Yeah, that works for me right there. Okay, so I will accept that. Um, let me show you how to do this again um, another way. In fact, we'll, uh, we'll change this type to the same type. Um, they've made this really simple inside of Dreamweaver now to do these uh, added types. If I, I'm going to make another class style. We'll go style and plus, and we'll call this other fancy. Other fancy. I like it. Okay, and then if I go again to type, and I click on font families, I'm going to have to pull this. Oh, there you can see it. At the bottom it says manage fonts. You can see that Alex, Br Alex Brush is already in here. I did that earlier, so I'll show you how I did that. I should have deleted it. Um, but manage fonts, and then I get this. Um, I have all these fonts to choose from, and there's a bunch of them in here. Uh, I can pick script because Alex Brush is a script, and you can see there's a check mark on it just because I checked it, and that's why it showed up over here in my menu. So I just check the one I want, and I say done, and then I go back to this again, and instead of saying font manage or manage fonts, I pick Alex Brush, right? Okay, so now my uh, my dot other fancy or my class has this font associated with it. So I'm going to go back out of live into design. I will pick this, everything but the period. And I will put this as other fancy. And then we'll go back to live and see what happens. Okay, so it's the same font as this, smaller because I haven't changed the size of it, but it was a little easier to do than the Google fonts. Now, the reason I did pick that Google font in the first place is because it allowed me to download uh, a font, a true type font that I could use on my computer so that I could indeed uh, build the thing in Photoshop and show my client what the uh, website was going to look like. With this, um, I don't know how you can do that. All right, anyway, uh, let's look at the code just to see what's happening over in code land. Right here, I have my H1, it has a class of headline, which has some scripting of its own, the size and position. The other thing it has is this span tag. So the span tag opens right here, and it has a class of other fancy. So the word unique design is in that span tag, and then it closes. So it only styles it from here to here, and then it stops. The next span tag opens here, it says class of fancy, and that uses that other brush, um, Alex brush, the one that we got from Google Fonts. Okay, so I am going to take this off here. There's a couple of ways I can do it. I can say here, none, and it will go back to the way it was. All right, okay, what's next? Um, we are going to style all of our other, our other rules, our other H1s and paragraphs and all that good stuff. But one thing I did notice, if I go to live here and then inspect, if I roll over these, it shows me that these things have margins on the top and the bottom already. I haven't put those there. They're just default margins. And I used to use an Eric Myers reset, which is just kind of resets everything to no margins, no padding, no anything. Um, and for this, I'm just going to write myself a little rule that stops all those padding. Uh, I want to control this padding by myself. I don't want it to have be automatic. And it also changes a bit from browser to browser. So it's kind of nice to not have it there. So I'm just going to come right over here to style. I'm going to write a rule, um, one rule that covers paragraph, comma, H1. Actually, I don't need an H1 rule, I already ruled that one. H2, H3, and H4. And that should do it. I'll need an H. There we go, that should do it. And all I'm gonna do is come here, 
to where it says margin. I'm going to link them together and click them all in at zero. And then for padding, I'm going to do the same thing. So it just zeroes everything out. Now I can control it um, when I write these individual rules. My first rule is going to be for my H2. So plus, less specific, H2 rule. And my H2 rule, um, if we remember, this is orange. It's bigger. I don't think I want it that big, but it is big in orange. So let's, let's go there. I want to use the same orange as I have up in my logo here. So I'm going to move over here so I can see it. Um, I am going to go to uh, text. <laughs> I'm going to go to color. And if I if you could see this, it'd be wonderful. I'll slide it up here. Hold on. Oh, crud. Here we go. All right. I think you can see it here. Click. There it is. See the eyedropper down here? I can click on the eyedropper and then pick something from a color from the screen. This is very helpful since I want those colors to be the same. So see how select that is? Not only that, I, so I don't have to click again if I ever need that color, I can add it to my swatches up here, then I can just come and select it. All right. So there's the color. Um, I want to control the size. Uh, the font size is, I'm going to, I'm sorry, font size. I'm doing these in EMs. So M's, uh, well, you'll look it up, <laughs> what M's mean. It's a long story, but uh, it's a good one. I'm going to make this one. I've already tested this out, so I know I want to add about um, 1.4. That's about right. Okay. And that's all I want to do to the H2. So on to the next style, which would be H3. I should roll this up so we can see this is an H3 tag right here. I'll just click on it and see it. All right, H3, new rule. And for H3, I want the size, which is here. Oh, they've moved it. There we go. M's again, E-M. And I want this one to be 1.0. And I want the line spacing. Um, or the line height, which is also called letting, line height to be 25 pixels. So I'm just going to double click here and 25px and enter. Okay. And that's all I want to do for this. The next rule is going to be for the paragraph tag, which is this. So plus, up arrow, enter. And for the paragraph, I would like the size to be text size also in M's, to be 0 0.9 M's, and then the line height to be 25 pixels as well. So double click it, and 25 pixels. And that should give us a little space between the lines here. All right, so it's looking a little bit more like my original. I'm going to come through here really quick and just start putting spaces where they need to be. I'm going to go to design mode to do this a little easier. So that needs to be a space. I like that sitting there. I'm going to add a Twitter feed here. Um, that's good. Bruce White. Da, 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 da. Now all these things can be adjusted. Even after you have several pages, I can come back and change any of these styles and it will change it on every page. Is that not wonderful? Okay. All right, I think that's it. Um, so next on the next movie, uh, we'll we'll make this uh, website responsive, so it'll change everything. Come back and see it.